Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we are going to do an introduction to Power Platform Virtual Tables. Now if you are one of those people who are very exclusively using model driven apps with Dataverse tables but you've got those important SQL tables and SharePoint tables out there and you just wish if you can pull this into model wraps as well, well then this is the video for you to watch because now thanks to this virtual tables technology you can do just that. So stick around, there is a lot to learn over here and understand, get your brains wrapped around it. Um, so we'll go through all of that step by step. But first, here's my intro video. So what I want to do is just make sure that you and I are on the same page about what is the brief definition of a virtual table. We'll take a look at some of the important characteristics of that and then we'll also take a look at it from a demonstration standpoint. So what exactly is a virtual table? Well it is a represented data from either SharePoint or SQL as a quote unquote table in Microsoft Dataverse. So what that actually means is that that data from either SQL or table is not physically resting on a Dataverse table. And so instead, when there's actually a runtime going on, um, the data or the state of that data is dynamically associated or retrieved from that data source, which could be SharePoint or SQL in your virtual Dataverse table. Just kind of keep that in mind. The other thing is there's no replication of data, such as like data flows, right? You know, understand if you worked with this for a while, um, there's a concept called data flows where you can go ahead and say, okay, my source is a, a SharePoint list. My destination is a full Dataverse table and data flows will keep the two in sync. But that means that you actually have a Dataverse table while the virtual table is not that. There is no actual data sitting in the Dataverse. Remember the whole concept is called as virtual table. Um, but, but even though that you've gone ahead and made that dynamic connection, you still can perform all the CRUD operations such as create, read, update, delete, all of those can be done from a Dataverse standpoint and yet it will affect the actual source which is SQL or table over there. Uh, so here's an example, all right? You know, right now as you can know that there's only three options for these virtual tables. There's SQL, Excel and SharePoint. Over there, you go ahead and make a connection using all the existing connectors that you may already have in your environments, or you can go ahead and use the connection reference to those connections and then pull that into Dataverse. This is basically how this works. And just like I said over here, right now, there are three data sources that are currently allowed. There is Excel, there is SharePoint, and then there is SQL Server. So does that make sense? Are you and I on the same page? Good. All right, now let's go and take a look at how this actually works. So for my demo scenario, I'm going to reference the SharePoint online list. And as you can see, the list name is travel requests. However, the entire cost management solution that I have is actually built on a model driven app that is run on Dataverse tables. So somehow I need to be able to reference this SharePoint list also into that model driven app. And that's where the virtual table kicks in. Because it's very important for me to be able to get all the data over there to make that cost management system a very holistic solution. So let's take a look at the SharePoint list really quickly because there's some of the important things I want to manage over here. Um, as you can see, it's a travel request app, simple process over here. We've got some great information. People's records are here, the travel, all of that. I also have the SharePoint's out of the box ID column. Keep that in mind because we'll be using that soon. Uh, but let's go back to the settings. We go to the list settings because you can take a closer look at what are these column types that are used over here. So here you go. On an average, I've got things such as single line of text. That's the title column. That's the default one in SharePoint list. I've also got the date and time. I've got the multiple line of text, but I also have a person or a group. Keep that in mind because we're going to run into a slight problem over here. Um, also, then there's other location, date and time, choice, number, location. So all of these are the actual column times. Um, I'll just tell you right now that the person or group that cannot be pulled in from a virtual table as of right now. Um, so we're just gonna have to make sure that we don't have these type of situations already available. However, in my Dataverse, I already have a reference of the users over there. So I'm not too concerned about losing this. I just wanna make sure that I have all this information about the travel request, its travel ID, the cost associated with that. I want all of that in. So now that you see an overview of this, let's go to Dataverse. Let's start creating this virtual table and just see how that all works. 
So I'm in my Power Apps and this is where I'm gonna make my virtual table. Now before you do that, remember if I showed you in the slide before that one of the things we're gonna need is your connection. And then even after that, if you choose, you can use the connection reference, but at least I need the connection. So that's an important point that the whole concept of virtual table still relies on one of those tried and tested features, which is connections. So here I'm in a very specific environment. I call mine as model driven stuff, but whatever environment that you use to create a virtual table, you need a connection already set up for whatever is the other one, which is SQL or Excel or SharePoint, all right? So I'll just go and test mine. And by the way, did you know that this whole left vertical navigation has changed a little bit, has evolved? It's pretty neat. Um, and so if I wanna find my connections now, I have to click on more, and then here I find my actual connections. I can go and pin it, so I actually see it over here. Um, I'm actually gonna make my virtual table, so I'll go and pin the tables as well. Cool. So I go to connections, and in my connection, I'm, I'm, I'm just scanning, scanning. All right, cool, I have my SharePoint connection already set up, uh, so we're in good shape. So here I go and click on tables, then on the tables, on the top, you will see the new table format. Uh, click on the drop down and there you will see a new table from external data. That is where we start creating our virtual tables, okay? So I'm gonna now click on this new table and over here, this new format comes up. And it already tells me, hey, you can select a connection and it's telling me what my connection is already. So this is the exact same connection I just showed you a few seconds ago. Now, if you wanna go and expand this options, you have this other thing also, manually con configure the connection reference. You see, that's in that original slide deck. I said that you can use connection references as well. Uh, but for this example, this is the beginning and introduction. I'm just gonna stick with the connector that I have. And that's SharePoint. So we're in good shape. Uh, we'll go ahead and now select, click on next. So here we go. Now, this, by the way, you should already be very familiar because this is almost the same functionality of you in that step in Power Automate. Remember when you go and create an action, it tells you if it's an action tied to a SharePoint connector, you gotta go ahead and give it the site URL, you gotta go and pick your list of library, exact same thing that we have over here. Um, so just for my reminder, if it was actually, up, I went to the site, it was on my POC site, and the list was called as travel requests, so that's what I gotta do. It already showed me the sites that I already have access to. Those are the ones I only see over here. You know that I have access to this POC site because we saw it. Therefore, it is also showing me this POC over here. All right, so it's not a concern about a security thing. It only shows you what you have access to. So let me go and click on the site uh, and then I'll go and click on next. And then after that, it tells me to choose a list. Uh, so my list was called as travel something. There you go, travel requests. So I'll select the travel requests. Um, and I'll leave this box checked as, as, as is, and then I'll go and click on next. And so now it's going to go and pull the information. It says loading required field. So it's actually going and making that connection reference which you've already done over here. And this is pretty neat, but I still wanna spend a few minutes over here so that you and I understand what's going on. Um, on the top left, it immediately tell me what the display name is. You and I know that display name came from the SharePoint side. Uh, the list is called as travel requests. So that's where it came as travel requests. But now the schema name, it is going ahead and putting in this name away. And if you have been using Dataverse, especially from a, data, uh, from a model driven app standpoint, Dynamics 365 standpoint, you are very familiar with this concept because it has this Dataverse table name prefix and then it also goes and cancels off any spaces that you have. Uh, so it already went and did this. Then it says, what is the primary key? From our side, it is the SharePoint, all right? So you know that. Uh, it also says, what is your primary field, which is title. So we know that as well. So this part over here, it's very important, very similar to as if you were creating a physical Dataverse table. Now over here, you will actually see the original column names of that SharePoint list. And what do I mean by original column names? Just see things over here. Um, ID, you know, the SharePoint list has an ID. You know that the primary column it already, SharePoint creates is called as title. Uh, but you see over here, it says that reason for travel. Uh, this is what the display name is, but this was originally how that column was created in SharePoint. And it's important for you to understand that because if a SharePoint list has organically grown, then you know that sometimes column names do tend to change. Because uh, like I said, Things happen, column names, you know, their references change, their reasons change, uh, but over here you will always be able to see what is that original column name. And so that's why, let this not concern you too much. In fact, if you know how I build my SharePoint list, I always go completely lowercase without, you know, no spaces whatsoever, uh, no underscores, everything. This is how I build my list. Therefore, the original list of uh, the original column name, I said reason for travel, uh, but then I went and cleaned that up. All right, so it's coming in right now. Everything is over here. Uh, we are scanning through, we're scanning through all the names that are coming in, city, state, everything. Uh, but, but remember this one over here, right? There was the requester. Requester was a type, person, or group. 
is that a requester coming in over here? Uh, let's do a scanning. I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. I don't see that requester. That is because right now as we stand, you cannot pull in these complex things such as uh, manage metadata. You can't pull that in. Uh, people or person or group, you can't pull that in. Uh, but remember, that's not the information that we needed. We wanted to make sure that we've got the ID, the original ID, and then what was the travel request, and then what was the cost associated with that. So for this demo standpoint, we are in good shape, all right? So now I've got everything I want over here. Uh, I don't want to tweak any of the display names, both from what I'm going to see and both from the standpoint over here, everything I like. So I'll go and click on next. Um, and this is like the final thing it's telling me, hey, just review it and then we can go finish it. So I like the side-by-side -side comparison it is doing. Um, I can go and see what is the URL, what is the list name. Uh, if I want to choose another one, I can click on it and it actually just takes me back to the previous step. This also I like from a Dataverse standpoint, tells me immediately, hey, you actually selected 25 columns and if you want to make any changes, you can go and do that. Uh, everything looks good. Now let's go and click on finish. So I'll click on finish and it starts with creating your virtual table. Now keep in mind over here that if for some reason you may already have a duplicate one in Dataverse, you may encounter an error on this. Uh, I don't remember having any existing errors. I mean, I don't remember having existing tables called travel request. So we'll just let this finish um, and then we'll go and take a look at our virtual table. And there we know, we have now landed in the tables property section. And you should be very familiar with this because this is the exact same look. Um, however, there's one difference over here. Uh, you see that it says type virtual, which is perfect because you and I know this is a virtual table. So it's a very interesting thing of how you're able to now immediately decipher which one is which. Because for example, if I now went one tab back, you go to tables, uh, you see all the tables over here, but right under type, if I just click on the type and I click on virtual, uh, you'll be able to see now three options. You see the virtual available over there. So if you select that, and if I go outside and click on apply, you can immediately see, hey, in this environment, do I have any virtual tables? Oh, by the way, I do, and that's the one that I just created. So just thought I'll throw, you know, throw that out. Um, but again, after over here, you are very familiar with all of these things. So you can actually go and see that, okay, there were four uh, items that had come in. The SharePoint list actually already had four items. There was the one, two, three, four event and grabbed all four of them. I can go and put on all my other stuff as well. Uh, airline, what was the airline? What was it approved? What was the destination city, country, all of that I can put in. The full destination came in, estimated air, estimated airfare cost, plane cost. And I'll, I'll just go and grab all these important things. Ah, I also need that ID column. So let me go grab that. I'll just put a few things here and there, right? So I'm gonna click on save. Uh, that way, at least this virtual data comes in and we're able to see all of this. So even the ID column, it was actually in the format of one, two, three, four. Uh, same thing over here, uh, one, two, three, four. And just to make sure that the data matches one to one, uh, one was actually a 24 seven pet conference. Uh, that's what it is, ID number one, 24 seven pet conference. Uh, let's take a look at four. Four was Educon conference in Seattle. This four, this four is the Educon conference in Seattle. So it just, the, the, the order is a little off, but the data is accurate and we just confirmed that. But if you're very meticulous like I am, just click on this option over here and we'll go from smaller to larger. And so now it actually resembles a lot like the SharePoint list. In fact, if you really want to resemble it, drag it and then drop this all the way out so the ID column is there. So this is neat. The data comes in. Well, what else can I do with it? Besides the fact that you and I said that we can, you know, see the data, it comes in, it's a virtual table. Uh, we can perform CRUD operations over here and it reflects that directly in the SharePoint list and vice versa too. Um, so CRUD operation stands for C-R-U-D, create, read, update, delete. Um, also keep in mind, the only things you can do over here is the access level that you have in your SharePoint data source or the actual source itself. So for example, in your SharePoint list, for some reason, there might have been customized permission where all you have is create, read, and update, but you can't delete it. Guess what? You cannot delete it over here as well, okay? Um, so let's do this. I'm gonna go to the SharePoint list. I'm gonna change this uh, title of that PET24 conference uh, to instead of PET con, I'm gonna change that to PET conference, all right? So I'll go and do that, and I'll go and click on save. The data has been updated on the SharePoint list side. Um, now, you don't have to wait because remember, there is no data flows, all right? So if I just come over here and I go ahead and refresh this, you will directly see that that change we made on that SharePoint list directly reflects over here as well. See, the pet conference came in. It was a pet con, it went in, in the pet conference. So let's go and see if it works the other way as well. I am going to now update this virtual Dataverse table. We'll see if it updates on SharePoint side. 
So to do that here in the Dataverse table, I'm gonna click on this edit, and in this edit, there's the whole option of edit itself. So just select that, it goes and takes you to the next page, which is right now, it is the edit format for this tables. Uh, and then I can go and make sure that I see all these other columns as well. The columns that we went and selected, they all show up. So I'll just go ahead and grab a few so you can actually see what's going on. Um, this is right here, all right? So it goes and pulls all this information. Now, for example, if I were to go change, say the North American conference, I will go ahead and change that to say uh, NA conference. I did that directly in Dataverse. I'll just select that over here. It is automatically saving on the right. You can see that it went and notice the change. It said data saved. If I now come over here to my SharePoint list, uh, see right there, it automatically became NA conference. And just to make sure that you and I are seeing the same thing, um, I'll go and make sure that this uh, ID is the exact same. It was ID, grab that ID, put that over here, save. Um, it will go ahead and refresh any second. This NA conference was ID number two. And that's what it is. ID number two it was North America. We went and changed it to NA and it did that. So the important important piece was that we were able to make the change in Dataverse and it reflected over here. Well, let's go and take it at the next level. This entire row, NA conference, I'm gonna select that. I'm just gonna go and delete it. So it is now saying that it went ahead and deleted that. Data is already saved. I'll just do a refresh just to make sure that the data doesn't come back. That row is completely gone. Just to make sure we refresh it that row is completely gone. I come over here, you see that that row has gone away from the SharePoint side as well. And sometimes you might have a slight delay, uh, but you can always come and see that this says, this list is in sync, last sync, less than a minute ago, which means the sync was completed. Uh, and if for some reason you just don't see it, you go and refresh that over here as well. Uh, but as you can see that the, the one that we deleted was uh, item row number two, we don't see that row over here. So it is really deeply integrated Remember, it is a virtual table in Dataverse and that relationship reflects both levels. But here's the beauty of it. Now that you've got this virtual table, you can go and perform all of these amazing actions. For example, in relationships, I can go and now build my relationships down to many to one or one to many. And if I go and select it, you already see that travel request. Remember, this is a SharePoint list in the back end, but now it's coming in as a virtual table. So I can go and start building these relationships with all these other Dataverse tables that are already over here. Other things you can do, again, back to the travel request, is you can start making these business rules. Remember, Dataverse sees this as a Dataverse table. Granted, it's virtual, but it sees it. However, you can start establishing and taking effect of all of these features over here. This is pretty awesome. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Remember, this is currently in preview, so don't go production with this, but definitely start thinking about it because you've always had Dataverse in model-driven apps, but you really wanted to leverage those tables in SharePoint and in SQL. And now, thanks to this virtual table concept, you can do exactly just that and go and make a full production inside your Dataverse as is, inside your model-driven apps, and yet leverage those external data sources. So hopefully this video was helpful to you, and as always, Keep using Power Apps with Dataverse tables. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.